Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna from Hasna Anatomy, and today we will study the lateral bone of your leg. The lateral bone of your leg is the thin bone called the fibula, okay? Anything in relation to the fibula is known as the peroneal. So if you all remember, we studied the common peroneal nerve in relation to the neck of the fibula. Today we will study this bone in depth. So let's get started. So the fibula also has an upper end, a shaft, and a lower end. Let's talk about the side determination. How do you determine what side fibula this is? So the first thing is that the head will be expanded, while the lower end will consist of this protruding part called the lateral malleolus. All right? This is the first point in side determination. The second point in side determination is to look at the lower end of your fibula. So we all know that this is the lateral malleolus. We go to the medial surface of the lateral malleolus and we look for this triangular facet. Now this triangular facet is supposed to be anterior. While this fossa, you can see this depression, this is called the malleolar fossa. The malleolar fossa is supposed to come posterior to this triangular facet. So if we are going to look at it that way, this means that the fibula that I have is the fibula of the right side. Because only when I keep it on the right does this come anteriorly and the malleolar fossa comes posteriorly. Now let's talk about the bony features of the fibula in depth. They're quite simpler than the other bones we've studied. Let's talk about the upper end. The upper end has two important features. So you can see the upper end of your fibula. In the upper end of the fibula, you come across this art superior articular surface, which is going to be making the superior tibiofibular joint by articulating with the fibular facet on the tibia. If you all remember, that was directed downwards. The second important part of the upper surface is this apex. It's mostly protruding in most of the fibulas. It's apex or the styloid process of the head of the fibula. Just anterolateral to this part is a slope, if you can appreciate. All right, then we come below. This is the constricted part of the neck of the fibula. And then we have the shaft of the fibula, which consists of a very sharp anterior border. The anterior border is characterized in its lower part by dividing into two lines, which causes the enclosing of a triangular area at the lower end. As you can see, this is the anterior border running into two lines and a triangular area is formed. All right, this is the anterior border. Then we have the fibula's medial border and finally a posterior border. All right, the surfaces that fibula is divided into are the obviously the lateral surface the medial surface and the posterior surface. The posterior surface consists of a very a prominent ridge which is not visible in the bone I have currently. This ridge is known as the medial crest. It divides the fibula into medial and lateral parts. Then comes the lower end. In the lower end of the tibia, you can see this protruding area is called the lateral malleolus that you can feel. It is subcutaneous. This part, you can literally feel on your ankle. The lateral malleolus consists of a medial surface a lateral surface, an anterior rough surface, and a posterior grooved surface. The lateral surface is subcutaneous that you feel as your malleolus. The medial surface consists anteriorly of that triangular facet that is going to articulate with the talus bone of the ankle. Posteriorly is the malleolar fossa. So that was all for the bony features of the fibula. Now let's go ahead and talk about the attachments. So if, if you all remember, I talked about this anterolateral slope in front of the apex or the styloid process of the fibula's head. This consists of the attachment of the two C's, the C, C, C for the C-shaped insertion of the biceps femoris and C for the collateral ligament, also known as the fibular collateral ligament. All right. Then we have the neck of the fibula. What's important is that the posterolateral aspect of the neck of the fibula passes the common peroneal nerve. Hence, if the common peroneal nerve is injured at this point, it results in foot drop. Next, we have the borders and surfaces of the fibula. Uh, the anterior and posterior border of the fibula will give attachment to the anterior and posterior intermuscular septum respectively. And then we have the lateral surface and the medial surface. Let's talk about the medial surface first. The medial surface consists of the attachment of EEP, while the lateral surface consists of the P two Ps. All right, the EEP stand for the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus, the peroneus tertius. Then we have the lateral surface, the peroneus longus above and peroneus brevis below. Now let's talk about the posterior surface. The posterior surface consists of two parts. The medial part of the posterior surface gives attachment to the tibialis posterior and the lateral part gives attachment to the SF. S for the soleus, F for the flexor hallucis longus. 
Then comes the triangular area, which is important. Remember that in the triangular areas, anterior margin and posterior margins are attached. Anterior margin, the superior extensor retinaculum, and then the posterior margin, the superior peroneal retinaculum. Apart from this, the area itself, the triangle itself, gives attachment anterior to posterior, the anterior interosseous and posterior tibiofibular ligaments. So that was all for the attachments and bony features of the fibula. It's a quite simple bone, easy to remember, although it looks quite complex because it's quite thin. Now let's talk about a very important clinical related to the lower ends of the tibia and fibula. This is known as the Potts fracture. What happens in the Potts fracture is that there is forced eversion or abduction at your ankle joint causes the breakage or the fracture of your medial malleolus first, then your lateral malleolus, and then the posterior margin of the tibia is sheared off or cut off. So you can say that the Potts fracture occurs in three stages. First, the fracture of the medial malleolus, then the lateral malleolus, then the posterior end of the lower part of the tibia. That was all for the important topics of the video today. I really hope you understood the bones of the leg. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching.